Welcome back my DIY nomads. I hope you're doing really, really well today. Um, so in the last few videos, you see me really raving on about security and I still haven't shown you me fitting my OBD reader little key, like safe, I guess you could call it, and the anti-drill plates that have gone around every single one of the handles, or the, the one on the rear, the one on the sliding door, and the two on the up front. Um, they've been on now for like a couple months, and the drill plate, sorry, and I'm really chuffed with them because they haven't rusted no like weird like some of them i guess when you buy them they're quite they're cheaper let's say and i have seen them where they've just started to like rust and then the rust leaches onto the paint then leaches down you get like those rust streaks which is a really sh big shame but yeah these have been doing really well up until now all right guys so that is where the usual obd port is and that's now going to come out use a flathead screwdriver just push on this side and slide it out and we're going to move it this new box down to this bolt here so i'm going to open up the box and then i've already sort of preemptively done this but take off these bolts here take off the back piece right so i'm going to slide the I'm going to basically take the OBD port, sort of twist it on its side and feed it through. The cable isn't very long, so I have to do it all up inside the body. I can actually now slide the cable over this piece and line it up. Next up, got the uh, grey bit, the uh, grey sort of metal bracket piece. And so on the, the on the port, you'll see this little sort of a flange bit here. That's to sort of so that bit can clip in and lock in. That needs to go through this gap. So you sort of have to feed it on like this, rotate it around, put it through, and make sure that the like it's this orientation. So this side is going on first because that's what spaces it off from the back of the box. There we go. So it can clip on. There you go. Right, see? Now it's mounted. You can put the cover back on. Get everything lined up. Get your bracket boy again. And then everything gets lined up. And we can put these nuts back on. So I have to do a little bit of wet angled away from the camera just because otherwise it's too difficult to get these on. Tying them up. Right, next up we need to loosen this, which I already have pre-loosened. I don't have that good a finger strength. So now, my OBD port is protected and it's all down here, which is epic. So I can get to it, but it's all secure. One line of defense. Right, the next point is the drill plate and I need to remove this whole black plastic piece starting with this, one of these bits of trims. I use a good trim removal tool to remove this piece, this piece here, which is actually probably the trickiest piece to remove, um, the bit behind the handle here, and also the, uh, the speaker cover. And I really do recommend looking for a good quality trim removal uh, set. Um, I started on the underside of the speaker here so that the if there was any sort of damage to the plastic, it's less obvious, um, but they do come away quite easily. The next one, this actual little, there is a, actually a little point that you can get a, a really small flat head in and actually it proved to be easier and better to use that for that piece because it just pops really easily out. This piece, if you tackle it from the bottom here, you sort of need to like 
get the trim tool in and then you need to sort of just lift it directly upwards towards the sky um, and you don't need to take it fully out because you can access the bolt with it just leveraged up like that and then this is the tricky one so you need to sort of use your tool sort of get it in there and it sort of if you get, do have a sharp enough edge on the tool it will just pop up like this um, I then slide the trim tool over to the side like that and it allows me to get a flathead screwdriver in and then using the flathead screwdriver there's a little clip uh, in there and it's actually really stiff I just sort of use the trim tool to leverage it get that clip passed and then that was good to go next we'll need to start removing some bolts the T30 screws and there's two behind the handle here one underneath this piece of trim that we removed these are actually PZ2 screws there's three on the speaker and there's the two on the underside of the handle so I started low down and worked my way up starting with the two screws on the underside the three screws around the speaker the two behind the handle here which are T30 as I said before The next one is like a bit weird, it's at a weird like sort of 45 degree angle, but it's just behind the controls here. And finally the one under the bit in the corner. And that is it free. Once these screws are off, you'll basically need to slide this whole piece that way. Um, and then it sort of comes off the clips a bit. Um, one thing that I should have done before this, as you'll see here, is remove the speaker. Um, should have just un, you know, disconnected it before taking it. It doesn't really make much difference, but um, yeah, it's a little bit fiddly. Another thing I should mention is you can't, on the driver's side, you can't slip the controls through the hole like this. It doesn't seem to work for me. So you need to disconnect from the cable and then I could pull it away and then lift it up. And I actually clamped it to the top of the door to save me disconnecting the other cable from the actual handle. And finally, that left me just one final trim piece panel to remove with those four screws around the edge. And then I could finally use a another trim remover to just get this door cut off and it just literally pops off and away. Um, if you are careful, you can salvage the, the original ones without breaking them. And then you get to this point and you do need to cut through this. Um, I just make an, like an X cut and then I tape it up afterwards just be really careful because obviously there are cables behind um, you will also need to remove this black plastic plug to access one of the bolts of the handle that you can see there there's another bolt in this hole just behind there right in my fingertip and then the other one is right there and those three bolts undone should release this side of the handle um, but be careful uh, I you have to use a deep socket bit to sort of get to the to get the bolts off but then make sure just try your best not to make sure they they fall off because otherwise they fall down here and then you have to cut another hole um, which is exactly what I do in a second here and uh, I was trying to be clever and it always goes wrong and there goes the whole bit so I ended up having to cut it open anyway. Other than that, all the other bolts came off quite well, which allowed me to sort of pull off the handle really easily like this. And then you just need to remove the cable. So you pull this black bit out of it, sort of clip the black cable out of the clip point there, slide it around till you see that cut hole in the steel, and then you can slide the whole cable out. And I'll show you here, it just pops off like that. That means the handles is way and free now, so you can start the next part of the job. Um, and the driver's side is a little bit more complex yet again. There's two to disconnect, and um, I think there might even be four bolts. So just really take your time. But the they are all this detail is included in the instructions of these kits, um, and everything that I'm doing today, I'll include links in the description below. Time to just tidy up all of this disgusting grime that's behind the handle because. Um, 
I basically lost the <laughs> adhesive in the kit. Not a big deal. I just used a bit of C Flex, but you can also use like CT1 or really any very good, strong uh, multi purpose adhesive that will also work outdoors. And I just went around this sort of top edge right against before it sort of dimpled down. And this is obviously going to hold the plate in place. And then once that is stuck on, we just basically need to reverse everything we did to get to this point. So you need to put the handle back on, slide the cable back in, line the bolts up, and then there's this second piece to the kit that you slide onto the two lower bolts, just like that. And then from this point, we are now free to basically completely put everything back together and just tidy everything back up. And just remember to also tape up the uh, cuts in the uh, sort of skin of the door head. But yeah, that's it all sort of squared away. Um, the one thing you will just have to keep an eye on is just the alignment of it as you're tightening them up. Just make sure it doesn't slide out and it's like got an even edge all the way around because uh, it can budge. Well, everyone, I hope those videos were quite informative and uh, helped anyone that might be trying to fit a system like that or even shown people an option that they didn't think was there. All of those lock, uh, those anti-drill guards and the OBD reader thing, easily in a day, easily in a day. Uh, I'm not saying it's gonna be easy for absolutely everyone, but for me, I managed to achieve that easily in a day. So um, it's, it's, a, it's definitely an achievable thing to do uh, without having to pay someone to come in to do it. Just make sure you take your time, do it properly. Don't ever rush anything like this um, and you know, if there's ever one of those steps where you're like, oh, it doesn't matter if I can skip that, don't don't skip it. Just make sure you do the job properly and, you know, it, it, you'll be chuffed in the end. And also, it's another level of peace of mind, which is awesome. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all so, so much for watching along. And if you find any of these videos uh, really helpful, please consider subscribing. And other than that, I'll catch all you DIY nomads next time.